The Discovery, Chapter 3, Part 2 Midnight froze. Making any sound at this point could mean the end of life as she knew it. The guard in the window hadn't noticed her yet. Maybe there was a chance that she could silently creep back upstairs, and they would just leave. Slowly turning on her hooves, Midnight started to climb back up the stairs. Just gotta be quiet, and hopefully they will- Midnight froze again. There was the knocking again, although this time it didn't sound the same. No, that was the sound of a hoof banging on glass. Midnight slowly turned her head, eyes wide in horror as they fell upon the Royal Guard's pony now looking right at her through the glass. To her surprise, the stallion smiled and gave a friendly wave. Maybe they haven't found anything yet. Midnight hoped. Heading back down the stairs to the door, Midnight paused, took a deep breath, and opened the door. Greeting her through the bright doorway, there were three royal guards, two unicorns, and one pegasus. The pegasus at the window held a smile, his emerald green eyes beaming in the daylight. The unicorn who had been banging at the door held a stoic face, and began to address her while the other unicorn seemed to be standing watch behind them. Good morning, miss, the unicorn began. My name is Sergeant Stone, and this is Lieutenant Duster and Corporal Ethereal. He gestured to the pegasus and the other unicorn respectively. Midnight Shadow, how can I help you, General Colts? She responded. We were investigating the meteorite crash about ten minutes away and just wanted to come by to see if you've seen anything suspicious this morning. Meteorite crash? When did this happen? She asked, trying to play dumb. Last night, ma'am. Lieutenant Duster chimed in. Oh, I didn't notice it. I didn't get back from work until very early this morning. You see, I was just actually about to go to bed. Oh, of course, ma'am. We're very sorry about the disturbance. If you see anything out of the ordinary, just let us know. We're going to be patrolling the area for the day, so we'll be nearby. Wait, what kind of out of the ordinary are we talking about here? I don't understand. Just anything strange. We've been getting some extraordinary reports from the area and just wanted to make sure that every pony is safe and well. Uh, alright. If I see anything strange, I'll report it to you guys right away. Fantastic! Alright guys, let's get moving. Ma'am, thank you kindly for your time. We'll let you get some rest. At that, the three stallions turned and began to walk down the steps away from Midnight's house. Closing the door behind them, Midnight let out a breath that she didn't even know she was holding in. Slowly, she slid down until she was sitting on her haunches and breathed. Oh, my Celestia, that was close. She whispered, as if even the slightest noise would bring the Royal Guard right back to her doorstep. I should probably go check on the alien, make sure they can't see under the window or something. Midnight rose to her hooves and walked to the guest room. As she rounded the corner and turned into the doorway of the room, she froze. Standing there in the doorway, barely a foot away from her face, was the alien. A few minutes earlier, David awoke to the sound of knocking at the door. He kept his eyes clenched shut and tried to ignore it. A few seconds passed and he thought maybe he might be able to get back to sleep. But then the knocking returned, only louder this time. David's eyes opened slowly, groggy and impaired. His vision came to him at a snail's pace, the whole world appearing as a blur. He blinked several times to clear his eyes of the crap that was surely obstructing his vision. After a few moments, he began to see clearly. White. All there was was white. Why is there only white? Did I die? Is this heaven? Purgatory? Hell? David's thoughts raced. Turning his head to the side, he saw a very light turquoise on the wall next to him. Oh. Never mind, white and blue. Already too colorful to be hell. His eyes scanned the rest of the room, taking in every detail. There was a dresser on the opposite side of the room. Its snowy color seemed to complement the light blue wall as well. There was a desk sitting against the wall behind him, directly under a window. Both shared the same color scheme of the dresser, accenting the room with a blue and white pattern. Serving only to amplify this, the sunlight filtering into the room through the white curtains bathed the room in a slightly orange hue, glistening off of the polished desk. Scanning to his left, he immediately spotted what appeared to be an empty IV bag attached to his arm. Not knowing what could be pumping into his system, he pulled the needle out of his arm and wrapped the now bleeding vein with some excess bandages from his arm. <sighs> Maybe I was picked up by another ship that was close enough to get me in time. Looking further down, he saw that he was laying on a bed. The sheets felt so soft and warm under his body. He immediately wished that he was under them and wrapped up in their silky embrace. His eyes found their way onto his beaten body, surprised to find that his arms had fared well and he still had free mobility in all of his fingers and joints. However, the story was not the same for his legs. His right leg was wrapped in many bandages from the ankle all the way up to the thigh, making it slightly difficult to move. His left leg had bandages tightly wrapped around his calf, but otherwise left untouched. Despite the burns and impalements, his legs were in no pain. 
In fact, his whole body felt warm and tingly. Then he realized something. Where are my pants? Where's my underwear? He croaked. Rolling over to his side, albeit with great effort, David pushed himself into a sitting position, his legs sliding off of the bed to the floor. However, the floor met his feet much sooner than he anticipated. David was surprised to find that the bed was barely a foot off the ground. Maybe whoever saved me is really short. Careful to keep the weight off of his leg, David limped to the desk and pulled the curtain to the side. As sunlight now poured into the unobstructed room, David squinted his eyes and took in the outside world. His gaze fell upon beautiful rolling hills and flowers blooming as far as the eye could see. Searching to his right, David saw a forest, vibrant and green. Scanning left, he saw what could only be described as the base of a mountain. Jagged rocks and small cliffs greeted him on this side. David took a few minutes to admire the scenery and opened the window. The cool mountain breeze gently caressed his face and filled the room with its scent. Where the hell am I? This place is so beautiful, I've never seen anything like it. David was torn from his musing when he heard what sounded like voices coming from down the hall. Maybe whoever had rescued him was just in the next room. David looked down at himself once more. Even if they had saved him and likely already seen him naked, David would rather meet his hero in the decency of modern clothing. Limping away from the window, David began his search for clothes. He didn't have to search for long, finding a pile of his bloodied clothes in front of the bed. Leaning down slowly, he retrieved his pants and slipped them on gingerly, careful to avoid putting too much pressure on his left leg. The pants, which looked more like shorts now, what with the burns and holes littering the leggings, slipped on easily enough, and David already felt better about his appearance. Minus the bloodstains and burns. Hearing a door close, David's attention was again torn from his current activities, and redirected to the sound of footsteps coming closer. Except they didn't sound like footsteps. They seemed to come down heavier than a normal person, and it sounded like there were two of them. As they got closer, a new realization crept into David's mind. There was some kind of... clopping noise accompanying the footsteps. Something akin to a horse walking on hardwood floors. As the mysterious footsteps approached the doorway, David prepared to meet his rescuer. Hopefully they weren't some terrible alien only saving him so they could fatten him up and have a large meal in the not-so-distant future. The footsteps reached the edge of the doorway and David prepared himself for whatever would enter. As his heart seemed to beat out of his chest, his savior rounded the corner and stepped into the doorway. Time seemed to freeze as the two very different creatures stared at each other. David's face was frozen in a mix of shock and awe at seeing a mythical creature standing in the doorway. Midnight's eyes were wide with surprise, she couldn't move nor speak. The sheer realization that the alien she had worked so hard to save was now very awake and very alert, and that hit her like a truck. It also happened to be staring right at her. The silence filling the room was overwhelming. The sound of a pen dropping a mile away would have made more noise than the pair of otherworlders locked in a perpetual stare-down. David was sure he at least had a major concussion now. He brought his hand up to his head to gently feel the bandages on the side of his head. Maybe I am dead, he thought to himself. Standing before him was a creature he only knew from legends, a majestic unicorn. Only it was a lot shorter. The top of its head barely reached its waistline. Its coat was a dark graphite and its mane and tail were a shiny ebony. There was a turquoise shooting star adorning both of its flanks. Its mane and tail were so disheveled, loose ends stuck out at every odd angle, and it strikingly resembled a young teen with a bedhead. However, what truly caught David's attention was the unicorn's face. What? With that face? Somehow it looks... familiar, almost human. Its muzzle doesn't stick out anywhere near as long as a horse back on Earth, and its neck is so much shorter. And what's with those lips? Soft, soft feminine lips like that shouldn't be on a horse. Should they? All that paled in comparison to the most prominent feature on the equine's face. A pair of beautiful, piercing sapphire eyes stared intently at David. The way they twinkled in the morning sunlight, captivating and beautiful, like nothing he had ever seen. Not even people had eyes as vivid and gorgeous as those deep blue wonders. Seconds might as well been hours as the two stared each other down. Both wonder and shock painted across both of their faces. Uh... David began, only to be interrupted by a decidedly feminine scream from the equine in front of him. She screamed aloud, fear now written all over her face. Midnight turned on her hooves and broke into a full gallop away from the doorway. How could I have been so careless with no way of knowing what this creature is capable of? Safety precautions should have been put in place. I should have been at least tied down until I could make sure... In her tired state, Midnight had neglected to ensure that the alien couldn't just grab her and eat her upon waking, and she was locked in a stare down with her for 20 seconds. Okay, I just need to create some space and then I can- 
Midnight was torn from her thoughts when her face slammed into a wall. Dazedly stumbling away from the new hole in the wall, Midnight struggled to regain her balance. Trying her best and failing to regain her ability to stand, Midnight flopped onto the ground. A red mark appeared just under her horn on her forehead. How? Midnight felt her blood freeze in her veins. In her drowsy, possibly concussed state, she hadn't noticed the hoofsteps behind her. Only she knew those weren't hoofsteps. There were only two of them, not four, and they sounded much softer. Rolling onto her side, Midnight turned her throbbing head towards the sound right behind her. As her eyes opened, a terrifying sight befell her. The alien was not walking towards her anymore. It wasn't even walking at all. It was right on top of her, leaning over her like a predator about to claim its next meal. Its hands were closing the distance between them, and it was all Midnight could do to clench her eyes shut and let out a small whimper. Maybe I should have left this thing in the forest after all. Alright, now in that position, that could mean a whole bunch of things. But we'll save that for next time. Right now, let's get on to our totally otherworldly donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coulthard, J10 Man, Darkside, Only One Thing, Dash of Evergreen, and TacoCat598. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Har, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Sword Brother, Mordred, Omicron, Lyrae, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Hadzaza, Ride Soul, Maverick, Iron Sky, Badass Waffle, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.